Hi everyone, my name is Steve. Today we're going to go through a very simple question. It's actually very easy, but just there is some logic that you need to sort it out to solve this problem. But that's it. Uh, let's take a look. So problem 1523, count all numbers in that interval range. So given two non-negative integers, low and high, it's asking us to return the count of odd numbers between low and high, inclusive. For example, 3 and 7, these are the two bounds. And between these two bounds, there are three odd numbers, that is 3, 5, and 7. Another example is 8 and 10. There's only one, which is 9, between 8 and 10. 8, 9, 10, there's only one odd number, which is 9. A very brute force solution is that we can just count. There's how many total numbers are there, which is absurd. That's very silly. So we, of course, we're not going to go through that way. Um, another approach is that we can use high minus low. That's going to give us the total number within this range. But that includes both odd and even numbers. So a very simple intuition, which is going to lead us to, we can use that difference divided by two. Will that always be correct? No, it's not always. There are a few cases that we need to consider. Let's take a look. For example, if this is three and seven, so it's very straightforward, just three, four, three, four, five, six, seven. So a total of five numbers within this range inclusive, and the odd numbers are three, five, and seven. So total, that is three, right? But we know the difference between these two boundaries is seven minus three, that is four. Four divided by two, that is two, right? So, but we actually have three odd numbers. So that is an edge case or like a different case. It might not be an edge case. It might be one of the regular cases. Another example is eight and 10. Both of these two boundaries, they are even numbers. So eight, nine, 10. 10 minus eight is two. So two divided by two is one. So there's only one odd number, which is nine. This is the regular, more regular case. If we just take the difference, divide the difference by two. Third case, which is low is seven, high is 10. So this is an odd number. The lower boundary is the odd number and the higher boundary is an even number. So seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Odd numbers are seven and nine. So there are two numbers here. So 10, but the difference between the two boundaries, 10 divided by 10 minus seven is three. Three divided by two is one. Integer division in any programming language should be three divided by two is one. So, but this, the number of odd numbers are two. So this one is kind of similar to this case. So let's see, is there any anything similar between the first case and the third case? There is one similarity that we can find is there's an odd number in this range, in the limit, in the boundaries, right? For example, this one, both the low and high boundaries, they both have the odd number as the boundaries. And for this one, there is one odd number as the boundary. So we can simply we can simply and safely draw the conclusion that as long as there is one of the boundaries is an odd number, we need to divide the difference by two and plus one. If both of the two boundaries are even numbers, we can simply use the difference divide by two. That's going to give us the total number of all numbers. Very straightforward as that. So now let, let's start writing the code. We'll just check if this low this low boundary is an even number. So we'll just do modular two is an even number. This means it's an even number. And we'll do the same for this. Module two equals to zero. That means both the lower and higher boundary, these two numbers, they are even numbers. If that is the case, we can simply do high minus low divided by two. That's going to give us the correct answer. Otherwise, that means either the lower boundary or the higher boundary, they are not an even number. That means either one of them is an odd number. So in, if that is the case, we'll just return the difference between low and high divided by two plus one. That is going to give us the correct answer in that case. Now let's hit submit and see. 
Correct. There is no other tricks to this problem. There are various ways to solve this problem, but I feel this is the most straightforward way to explain and understand this problem. And I don't want to minimize to further simplify this logic to make it a one line. It's kind of, we can do that, but it will be less readable and understandable. Um, I hope this makes sense. If that is the case, please do me a favor and gently tap the like button on YouTube video. That's going to help me out dramatically. I really appreciate it. And also don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel as I have accumulated quite a few lead code videos on algorithm or data structures. Feel free to check it out. Hopefully I'll just see you guys in just a few short minutes. That's it. Thanks very much for watching.